Willie Hugh Nelson was born in Abbott, Texas on April 29, 1933 to parents Meryl Marie Greenhaw and Ira Doyle Nelson. His middle name, Hugh, was chosen for him to honor his brother, who died shortly after birth. His two parents left Willie after his own birth. His mother first when he was six months old, followed by his father when he was six years old. He was raised by both his grandparents, who taught him and his sister Bobby to play the guitar and showed them basic music theory. His early musical influences were his grandparents and country music stars like Hank Williams and Bob Wills. He also liked Frank Sinatra and jazz icon Louis Armstrong. While attending Abbott High School, Willie played baseball, football, and basketball. He was also involved with the Future Farmers of America, in which he helped raise pigs. While in high school, he started playing with a band called the Texans. After graduating high school in 1951, he decided to go to the Air Force, but was medically discharged after only serving nine months due to a bad back. It was after being discharged from the Air Force that Willie was to meet his first wife, Martha Jewel Matthews, a beautiful car hop Willie met one night while out with his friends. Willie was stone in love immediately, describing her as the prettiest girl I have ever seen. After dating for a while, Willie and Martha would soon start a turbulent relationship filled with ups and downs. Martha went as far as tying Willie down while asleep with the kids' jump ropes and beating the hell out of him. Their friends would often tease the couple, comparing them to Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball because of the way they would treat each other. After 10 years of marriage and three children, the couple finally split up in 1962 while remaining friends. Willie would go on to have three other marriages. The four marriages yielded seven children. After his son Billy was born in 1958, Willie decided to take a job as a door-to-door -door salesman selling encyclopedias. Describing the job as unethical, he would later take a job selling Kirby vacuum cleaners door-to-door. -door. But it wasn't until he moved to Nashville that he took a $50 a week job writing songs. Hello Walls and Nightlife were recorded and became big hits. Willie then joined Ray Price's band playing bass guitar. He would still write songs creating hits for artists like Patsy Cline, Roy Orbson, and Billy Walker. Crazy, performed by Patsy Cline, became the biggest jukebox hit of all time. Throughout the 60s, he would write many more hits for other artists, play the Grand Old Opry, get remarried to Shirley Cawley, and sign a lucrative contract with RCA. He also met Waylon Jennings in 1967, which would later prove to be monumental in both men's lives. The early 70s saw Willie signed to Atlantic Records as the label's first country artist, recording the album Shotgun Willie in 1973. The album was well received and sold well, but Atlantic dropped him anyway. So he moved to Columbia Records, where he was to gain full creative control, releasing Red-Headed Stranger in 1975. But it wasn't until 1976 that he was to join forces with Waylon Jennings, Jesse Coulter, and John Paul Glazer, forming the group The Outlaws, and releasing the album Wanted, which was a collection of pre previously done material. The album sold a million records and was country music's first platinum record, revitalizing Willie's career. Willie would find even more success in the late 70s, including two more platinum records, Waylon and Willie and Stardust, solidifying Willie as a heavy hitter in country music. The 80s would see Willie with a number one hit redoing Always On My Mind in 1982. He would also perform concerts to benefit farmers and those in need. In 1985, he formed The Highwaymen with fellow artists and friends Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash, and Waylon Jennings. The single Highwayman went to number one on the country music charts. The four were also featured in the movie Stagecoach. The band broke up in 1995 due to the declining health of Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings. In 1990, Willie was audited by the IRS and was found to owe some $32 million in back taxes. They eventually settled on an amount and his legal troubles were resolved by 1993. Willie's musical legacy is that of a barrier breaker, with musical dignity, op opting to write songs that he loved and felt rather than what was popular and accepted. He still performs often and released his 66th 
That's right, folks. 66th studio album, God's Problem Child, in 2017. He's still married to his fourth wife, Annie D'Angelo, and plays with his sons in a band called Willie and the Boys. If you like what you heard, please click like, comment, or subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.